As we mentioned, voter turnout hit a record this year with more than 66% of eligible voters showing up to the polls. I asked Shumit Ganguly for insight. He's the chair of Indian Cultures and Civilizations at Indiana University. The key issues that voters care about are the state of the economy, uh, the presence of corruption in everyday life, and particularly in high places. They are also concerned about uh, the breakdown of law and order in various parts of the country, and in particular border states. They are very concerned about illegal migration from other countries, notably Bangladesh, which is changing the demography of particular parts of India. And here, political parties have been complicit in allowing illegal migrants to come in and then enabling them to get, in, get on the voter rolls uh, and uh, so that they can bolster their own electoral fortunes. But overall, across India, it's the economy, it's uh, uh, political order, and it's uh, uh, questions of corruption that are on the minds of most voters. The opposition party, BJP, looks to be leading at the moment. The exit polling in India is notoriously unreliable. But let's just say that BJP does win the majority. How would India be different both domestically and internationally? Domestically, uh, I suspect the BJP would immediately focus on the state of the Indian economy. Um, and they probably would be fairly friendly to India's business community and to India's corporate houses more than the previous government was. And furthermore, uh, uh, they, uh, the more disturbing part about the BJP winning is that many uh, people remain concerned about the BJP's very blatantly pro-Hindu agenda. Now, India is a predominantly Hindu country, but it also has very significant minorities, and in fact is the second largest Muslim community, has the second largest Muslim community in the world. Minorities might not feel as comfortable with the BJP regime coming into power. Uh, externally, the BJP, I suspect, will try and pursue a slightly more muscular foreign policy, particularly towards India's most, more nettlesome neighbors, China and Pakistan. This was already evident in the campaign trail, and uh, depending upon who's appointed to key ministries, we might have further clues about the kind of foreign policy that it's, uh, it's likely to pursue. You talk about the short-term challenges. You uh, actually return to India several times a year, which gives you uh, that unique perspective where you can see things there on the ground, but also take a step back. Um, can you talk about some of the long-term challenges and issues that India will face long-term in the next five years, five to ten years? Absolutely. There are several long-term challenges that India confronts. One of them is uh, that of climate change. Uh, climate change will have a disproportionate impact on India. Some of it is already evident. Some of the monsoons are either becoming more intense or not coming at appropriate times. Sea levels are rising in a number of coastal areas of India. Uh, certain parts of India are experiencing more uh, vigorous uh, winters. Uh, other parts of India are experiencing drought. These are likely to intensify. Uh, in addition to that, India uh, faces a critical problem of dealing with creaky infrastructure. Regardless of the political coloration of a government, this is a practical matter that India w will have to invest in to attract uh, uh, foreign investment into India. Many foreign investors shy away from India because of India's extremely anemic and uneven uh, infrastructure. All right, Shumit Ganguly from Indiana University. Thank you so much for your assessment from Bloomington, Indiana. Thank you very much.